Good morning, brothers and sisters. Doug White, down here in Alabama. Saturday morning coming down. Peace and love to everybody that tunes in on this little channel. Hear what, uh, hear what, you know, we got to say here. This old man's got to say. Wish it ain't much <laughs> this morning. Let's see. That's my breakfast that I had out here. I was a good boy yesterday, cut the grass. So I got breakfast on the lawn this morning. Mosquitoes are starting to get out here, so I don't know how long I'm going to stay out here. <laughs> but, uh, Just enjoying my cup of coffee here. What's that? Anyway, don't know what I was going to say. <clears throat> Except uh, cut grass yesterday. The beautiful bird sanctuary behind. Uh, you know, we have a bunch of woods back here. Squirrels, everything under the sun right here. Country in the city <laughs> we have over here. But uh, birds, I guess you can hear them. Just everywhere, right here in our little town. And in East Alabama, West Georgia. But anyway, uh, just wanted to touch base with everybody, anybody that's a mosquito right there in front of the screen. <clears throat> but uh, I cut the grass yesterday, pumped up all all the tires, about three tires that were flat on it. Then I, uh, uh, what I did was I uh, filled it up with gas, checked the oil. Then I had to put a little thing in there where I had to, uh, Use jumper cables to jump it off. Finally got it running. Once you get it running, you gotta stay running, uh, or you, or you gotta go back to the place where you, you jumped it off. Oh, what a pretty red bird! Beautiful. But anyway, got all that done and cut the grass and. Uh, Probably go back later on with a little bitty more and kind of get around the bushes and stuff. We have these trees here. See that right? See those trees right there? I did those with a, uh, a reciprocating saw. One of the newer models that have a locking. You don't want to get one of the old ones where, but when the blade locks on the, uh, in it, you can get one twenty twenty five dollars. And uh, I use that instead of the chainsaw, which you spend all day putting the blade back on when you try to use one of those. So I don't use that. I use a reciprocating saw when I'm working in the yard. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, peace and love down here in Alabama. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to talk about today. Well, I was thinking what I talked about today was uh, what what is it that that the true gospel does? For one thing, it brings good news, and it also the true gospel magnifies, in my view, the love of God. It magnifies. In my view, the love of God. You see, you no longer, once you believe in God's safe, sovereign grace, you remember the old grandpa that died before, you know, all these people you see that that uh, you thought uh, because they didn't get to a preacher, a preacher didn't get to him, and didn't go around front and make a decision that, well, they're just in hell, you know. But what the, what it does is, 
that God can save anybody he wants to at any time, any place, even the, the on remote islands, that he can do that. Well, what does that do? That magnifies the love of God. It magnifies his love. I once had a friend that, uh, well, I lived up in Atlanta. That friend, I just met him, in, you know, when I was up there. We went up there to get a job. Couldn't, there was a time you couldn't hardly get a job here in the valley if you got blackballed from the company. So you'd have to go up to a big city somewhere to get a job because you get blackballed. And you had to, you had to, uh, do your penance <laughs> and then if you wanted to come back and get a job with the meal company but uh so i went up there and i was, just had got married we was living up in atlanta i ran into this fellow he was a country boy and he was doing the same thing i was doing. Well, except he worked on trucks he could fix a truck cars he could do anything anyway he uh came by one morning, I had this old Willis Jeep. It was just a two-wheel, two, one four-wheel. It was just two-wheel, but it was. I had a winch on it. It could, you know. We used to do the mud thing before it was popular. <laughs> the mud bucket. We used to do that way back before it was popular. I had a Willis, and uh, it had four bull all rusted out. It wouldn't hardly run. He said he come by my house, said my apartment, and said, uh, "Let me take that uh, Jeep to work with me today." So I said, well, go ahead, you know. I said, okay, take it with you. Maybe you can do something with it. So I can't pay you that. Of course, he knew that. He takes that thing down to work with him. And in between time, he puts a new floorboard in it, fixes the, uh, the engine where it run, and uh, does all this work on it, brings it back to me, you know. And, uh, but anyway, that's just the kind of fellow he wants. Give you the shirt off his back, country boy as can be. But he had a real bad problem. His wife cheated on him, and he drank. You know, and then uh, one day he comes down to my uh, apartment and says, hey, let's go on up here in the country and go fishing, you know, at this place, you know. He wanted me to go with him for the weekend. I was going to, you know, and I'd have to be away from my wife for a night. So I said, no, nah, I don't think I will this time. Of course, I used to always go with him, you know. But this time, for some reason or another, I didn't go. <clears throat> and anyway, uh, later on that weekend, somebody comes down and says, Johnny's dead. His car rolled over. Uh, he rolled his car over. He was drinking. And rolled up on top of him and crushed him. But his little boy that was with him was unarmed. Well, uh, I used to think, you know, myself. Back then, I didn't have much idea about God. didn't know much about anything. Ignorant. You know, that unless God shows you something, you don't know anything. Well, you know, just from what I'd learned my whole life, I said, well, poor Johnny. You know, I guess he went to the bad place. But you know what? I don't think that anymore. I used to think, you know, see, that Johnny had love. He was a friend indeed. Yeah. A friend in need is a friend indeed. You know, and he had, he wasn't no perfect man, but Johnny had love. He was a gentleman. He'd give you the shirt off his back, and he always helped somebody when they were down. Yet he had these, these great problems, you know. But I don't think that way anymore. In fact, he was in a, a gospel choir, you know. He sang in a choir. He played the guitar, too. He was a, an artist, too. But also, he could work on anything and fix it. But he died long years ago. And now, I don't think, I think he's been up there the whole time in that beautiful place. His soul and spirit has, has been there in that beautiful paradise all this time. That's just my view on the matter. See, what what true gospel does, the glorious gospel does, it expands the love of God in, the, in one's mind. It expands, it magnifies the love of God. 
You don't look at the world the same way you used to look at the world. You look at it through rose colored glasses. Or you look through it through the glasses of love, you know, realizing what a sinner you are. And if anybody makes it to heaven, it's going to be because of God's amazing grace, his rich mercy, and his great, not small love. But I was just thinking about Johnny this morning. thought I'd tell a story about him. Uh, he came down to get me. Usually I get, would go with him, ride with him, but this time I didn't go. Maybe it's so I could tell this story here 40-something years, 50 years later. Maybe that's why he was here. But Johnny, give you the shirt off his back. I never will forget him. And uh, uh, he died many, many years ago in a tragic way. And I uh, used to think with my uh, flawed way of thinking that was that I learned on television. But I don't think that way anymore. I think old Johnny, you know, he used to tell me, well, he believed in Jesus, prayed and everything else. But he had he had some uh, problems just the way I did. <laughs> I had problems too. Uh, and so, but anyway, we're all sinners. If anybody winds up in God's heaven, it's going to be because of his great love and his rich mercy. And, uh, and I believe there's a whole lot of them out there. Or else... How do you get to a number that's innumerable? Like we read over there in the book of Revelation. Where do you get to that innumerable number? Certainly not these people that think that they're beating the bushes to find one convert, crossing oceans to uh, talk to somebody that don't even want to hear them. No, I think it's by God's great love and rich mercy. I think something's going on that we don't see. All we see is in the natural. But God sees it in, in perfect 2020 is what I'm screaming here, down here in Alabama. On this beautiful Saturday morning with the birds singing and the mosquitoes starting to get out. But uh, I just thought I'd come talk to you this morning and I'll tell you that little story. Uh, anyway, all I can think to do is a shout out to uh, Spain. France, Mexico, South America, uh, Ireland, UK, Canada, foreign country of California, <laughs> all the brothers and sisters out there that that uh, tune in and listen to this old man down here in Alabama, getting to be old man, but you know, I'm blessed that I can still get around and do a little something, because one long ago, several years back, I was at the point of death myself and being pushed around in a wheelchair. So if I got any breath left into me, in me now, it's going to be proclaiming the good news of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ for this great multitude of people that no man can number. Because what? He's rich in mercy. But anyway, peace and love to everybody out there that, that tunes in this old man down here in Alabama. And, uh, I hope I catch you on the rebound. God bless.